Hello everyone, welcome to the Nicole One Show. I'm your host, Cricket. Today we have a guest, Rachel Frazier, CEO, founder of Yet Praise Dance Company. This is Rachel Frazier, interview part two. I just wanna say God bless you and welcome Rachel. Um, As a minister and as a dance leader, what are some of your strengths? Well, um, we touched on it briefly. Uh, I believe the whole, the only strength that I have is the ability to trust the Holy Spirit. And I, I say that because I know I can't do anything in myself. I can't, I can't, I can't teach a class in my own ability because when you know you don't have anything and you don't have anything to offer the people and you haven't gotten this training, you literally have to go to the Holy Spirit and say, what do you want? And and for me, this is ministry. So when I get, when I put a program up or when I, I introduce something that we're doing, the warfare that I go through is untold. When I began to produce the, the, the videos and write the book for School of Worship, which has, School of Worship has 36 videos and it has three textbooks that I've written for this program. The devil must have been some kind of mad. Now, I've never written anything in my life. And so when the Lord told me we're going to write a book, I was like, who? Who going to write a what? You know, I'm, I'm thinking, me? You know, I, I didn't, I was a good student, but I, I, I mean, I got so many spell check errors just on a post I make with Facebook. You want me to write a book? Me? Oh, okay, Lord, you got jokes right now. But this is kind of how it happened. And so I'll literally just sit there and say, well, what are we writing? And, and then just began to write what I hear in the spirit or sometimes lessons that have been taught through the church, it would come together in that manner. But my strength, the only strength I have is to trust the Holy Ghost. When I got ready to record those videos, the second set of classes, I had a car accident where I almost died. Then I, I would go into grave sicknesses. Like I was covered in highs from head to toe. Doctors couldn't find out what was wrong. Every time I get ready to do anything, I can try to do a Facebook Live. The attack is coming because it's it's Holy Spirit leading. It's not me. And, and I've, I've become aware of that um, as I've done the different things in ministry. I, can, I know when I'm flesh because I don't feel the grace of God that carried me through. I've been in the middle of a live video and feel the displeasure of the Holy Spirit because he didn't want that. And in the middle of a statement, cut the live video off and go and delete it because I can't do it in my own ability. It's very important that whatever I do for the Lord, the Holy Spirit has to be the forerunner and they have to see God because if they're seeing Rachel, then I'm, I'm in error. And I'm learning more of this as I go that everything, the only strength I could ever have is to trust in the spirit of the Lord. Now, whenever I start saying, well, my... My, I feel like my strength is I can speak well or I can record. I've learned how to put these together. I think I'm going to lose everything the Lord ever gave me. Because when the Lord healed Hezekiah, because Hezekiah prayed and turned his face to the Lord and prayed and asked him to heal him, the Lord gave Hezekiah 15 more years because he humbled himself. But then Hezekiah went and when the people came to see this miraculous thing that happened to him, Hezekiah started showing the people all the stuff in his palace and all of his riches and everything he had. Those people didn't come to see that. They came to see and hear the testimony of how God healed Hezekiah. And so the Lord didn't strip Hezekiah, but he, he said that he was going to do it to his children and that the nation would suffer after that. But Hezekiah didn't even care about that because as long as I'm straight during my time, we good. And I feel like that's what the Holy Spirit has me doing. As long as people come to me and ask me how and what and how did I get here? And I keep saying, 
I didn't do anything but ask the Holy Spirit for help. I didn't do anything but trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led. The Holy Spirit showed me. If I keep pointing people back to the Spirit of the Lord, I believe the ministry he's allowed me to serve in will prosper. But the moment I get on here and tell you, oh, girl, I... I, I go I go in that studio and I practice and I pray I be a bold faced lie because I am what I am literally because of the grace of God. I don't have no credentials to boast in. I can only boast in Jesus. <laughs> I can yeah. boast that He saved me. He set me free and He's given me this opportunity. When I get ready to record a class, I'm usually going through PRD hell. So I can't get up in there and say, oh, I did this. I done went through an attack. I done cried. I done had to fast. I done had to pray. And then when I'm recording the class, I'm so broken. You're really only getting Holy Spirit because Rachel can't stand up because I went through hell for four or five hours or days before I even recorded the class. So when I get up there, I'm literally like, Lord, what am I supposed to give these people now? And that's, that's, that's basically how everything goes with me. I don't have the privilege of saying I studied, I this, I that. I'm literally listening and waiting and relying on the Holy Spirit to tell me what to do next. If he don't say do nothing, then we being still. Amen. Look at Psalms 149.3. Let them praise his name and dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the tremble and harp. That is the ministry God placed in your belly because it's everything. It's everything that you worship, not only through movement, but through song, through dance, through everything. And like you said, being guided by the Holy Ghost. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of people can't say that. So it's an honor and privilege to hear your story. It's just amazing. I have one more, couple more questions. Oh, what, are they? <laughs> what are the areas of limitations that you desire to grow? Man, this is something that I've been struggling with literally for the last two years. Okay, I'm 41 years old, so I'm not a spring chicken. Uh, I dance with a 18 year old, a 20 year old and a 29 year old. Okay, they're very young, active women. And then there's me. <laughs> okay, and so the limitations that I'm dealing with, I'm fighting with my age because at this age, my body don't do what their body does. Okay, and most of them, two of them have sat under my leadership for at least seven years. And so one is my daughter. So I've literally been training her since she was little. So four or five years old, I've been training her. But the other young lady has sat under my leadership for seven years. And then the other young lady, I think this is going into her third year. But literally um, through the training and the moving of the Holy Spirit, they've been able to catch things like this. And so I have noticed that I haven't been able to keep up with them as well because I'm more in the leadership side and the teaching side, and I don't have as much time to put into the practice when we have to choreograph things to go out and minister or um, you know, do events or different things. So um, I have gained some weight in the last uh, you know, two years, not just the pandemic weight, but my weight began to shift about two years ago. My whole life, I've been 98 pounds. And so after I started having kids, because I have six children, after I started having kids, yes, six children. Now the man I told y'all about in the beginning, when I was in a, in a strip club, that was my boyfriend. Once we realized we were living in sin by us shacking up, living together unmarried, we instantly stopped sleeping together and got married. Literally, we got married in my mother's living room because we wanted to honor God. And I didn't know that I was pregnant in the midst of all of this. And so when we found out I was pregnant, so we got married because we wanted to honor God and not bring this child into the world, um, you know, out of wedlock. And so from there, my boyfriend from the strip club became my husband and we've had six children together. So all of our children are for each other. We got three girls and three boys. We are the black Brady Bunch. <laughs> and so literally, and we had the three girls first. So the oldest is 21, then 18, then 19, then 18. And then we have three boys which is uh, 17, he'll be 18 next month, 17, 15, and 14. So I was pregnant for like five years straight. And I literally danced through all of those pregnancies. That, that's another testimony. But uh, literally, you know, I think the limitations are, you know, my fighting with my age and my weight 
and making the time to practice. And so what my work day now consists of is as soon as I, cause I come into the studio, that's I'm in my office right now at the studio. I come into the studio Tuesday through Friday to actually work on everything that we do for the company. But the very first thing that I do now is I go into intercession and a dance practice. So that's how I have to start my day every day or else I'm not gonna be able to keep up with my group because the older I get, the more flexibility I lose, the more, the less I remember the choreography the way they do. And so we got one girl in the group, she's the brain, Sonaria. She knows every move, so if I forget, she's got it covered. But as a leader, I feel the responsibility that I need to go into my own rehearsal prepared and knowing what needs to be done. But that means I have to discipline myself to at least rehearse an hour a day to make sure that I have something to feed the group that I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of, that God has trusted me to lead. So I, I have to practice Tuesday through Friday. And then I also practice on Saturdays at whatever time I could come into the studio to practice. But right now, those have been some really hard areas because, you know, with the pandemic and with everything going on, staying consistent has definitely been an issue. But I literally just had to make up my mind at the beginning of the year. This is what we're doing. This has to be my lifestyle. Or if I'm going to serve effectively, I've got to make sure I discipline myself. And so just yesterday, I came into the studio and I hadn't danced in three weeks. Now, I had a bad car accident in March, so that limited me from dancing for quite some time. And so um, when I was able to get back to dance, I was limited on what I could do. And I wasn't able to actually get back to dance until September or between September and October. So that's a long time to not dance, a lot of flexibility loss. Um, and so it was very difficult. And so from September until now, it's, it's been a struggle to consistently get into the studio to dance. So I get in for a good two, three weeks and then miss two or three weeks. And so I have basically had to alter my lifestyle to, to say, this is what God's called me to do. I wanna do this until I can't even walk anymore. So that means every day, Tuesday through Saturday, I have to make an hour allotment to simply go hard and worship and pray and keep my body limber and active. But prior to this week, it's been very difficult, but I had to literally make up my mind that this is what we're doing. This is not even an option. This is a part of your everyday life. You're gonna go in there and worship and dance for an hour. Even if it's not scripted or choreographed, I have to stay active to keep up my group. And that, that's a very difficult thing when you start to get older. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 Lord. That's all I'm going to say. I understand. <laughs> but for six kids and talking about you all wait, girl, mm, you look mighty beautiful for six babies. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. I'm bigger than you and I got one. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna say, and I am a little older, but I, uh, uh I was bigger than you at your age, okay? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And my so, mom, so, my mom was a toothpick, so she was always really small. So it's a lot of genetics, but mm -hmm. and I have, I haven't, I'm my current weight, and I want to say this: my current weight is 145, which okay. is technically still not heavy, mm -hmm. but for my little frame, it gives me knee issues, it gives me back issues. So mm -hmm. when I'm trying to execute the choreography you know, it's a lot harder to do that when you're trying to lift up and jump and turn and flip and do all these things. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult. And so I don't think I'm overweight. I just think that I'm not at the best weight to do what God is calling me to do. Amen. Because you know what? I was a toothpick as well. And then when I got married, I was like a eight. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I was about a, a eight, gained some weight, gained 10 pounds on the cruise. So ended up getting a divorce, but um, that weight, I was like a 12. I went to, from an from a eight to a 12. And now my eating habits had to change because I'm older. Yeah. Five old, when you hit five old, your life's gonna change again. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my eating habits and the weight just start coming off. But now I have to add up a better exercise. I got to get up and exercise. Yeah. He ain't playing with me. You need to exercise. So I got to get up and exercise and, yeah. and do what's necessary. So I do understand because you once you get older, your body has to adjust. Yeah. Gonna change and you got to adjust. And so you're adjusting and you're adjusting yeah. what? In the Try name it. of <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. 
adjusting well, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, in closing, give us an encouraging word for dance leaders that want to, some people, they want to become dance leaders and some that's in the ministry of dance, dancing want to become leaders. Give us an encouraging word. Well, the first thing that I want to tell you is if you are looking to get in any form of leadership in ministry, you have to make sure that your relationship, your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus is rock solid. You've got to make sure that you are spending the right amount of time fasting, praying, reading the word and memorizing scriptures. If you're not hiding the word in your heart, you are not gonna be able to lead and pour out to anyone. And what I've learned in the leadership role is there's a lot of demands and a lot of pulls on the leader. And you don't have time to go run up in the prayer closet to get ready to answer a question or deal with an issue. You've got to already be prepared. So I want to encourage anybody that's thinking about pursuing leadership or opening a dance company or starting a dance ministry, make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that first the Lord is calling you to do that because it comes with another level of warfare. My encouragement always comes with a word of warning because you'll get out there and be in a position and, and it'll be like the seven sons of Sceva where they, they wanted the Holy Ghost anointing that Paul had and Peter had. And when they went to cast out a demon, they said, I'm casting out the name of the, uh, the I'm casting this you out in the name of Jesus of whom Paul spoke or whom Peter spoke. And the demons looked at them and said, Paul and Peter, I know, who are you? And so if you don't have legal access and legal right in the spirit, you're mm -hmm. going to you're gonna basically have happen what happened to the seven sons of Sceva. They literally, the demons whipped them and sent them running away naked because they weren't able to handle the warfare for where they were trying to go. So if you're going to go into any form of leadership in the dance, uh, open up a company or a studio, you've got to make sure that beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is calling you to do it because there have been days when I wanted to quit. There's been days where we didn't have enough money to keep the facility running. There's been days when I've been slandered and lied on. There's been so many issues that I've had to deal that if I didn't have the connection and the relationship with the Holy Ghost through prayer and intercession, this, this couldn't even exist right now. This, this ministry is seven years strong because of prayer intercession. And so if you want to be in leadership before you even take that step, because everybody wants to run into it. And, and I heard it in prayer last week. I got to do it now. You better know that you know and take the time to submerge it in prayer. Get confirmations on top of confirmations and then make sure you are sitting under a spiritual covering that is bold enough to tell you, no, you missed it. No, you can't go. No, you shouldn't minister here. I don't believe you need to take that assignment. If you don't have a leader in your life that you are accountable to, you can't go and be a leader. I have a, a leader over my head and I have other leaders that I, I, I counsel with before I release things, before I do things, because everything comes with warfare. And a lot of times we get out here and the ministry doesn't last or it doesn't thrive and become what God wants it to be because you can't handle the warfare because you're not really ready spiritually. You got the word from the Lord, but you didn't, you, it wasn't time for you to activate on it yet. It was time for you to go into prayer, into prayer, into session saying, Lord, I need you to spiritually mature me and prepare me for this calling. And a lot of times we bypass that preparation time and we get the word in prayer and we immediately go activate it. And I'm guilty. That's why I can say this. I've done it. And then you, you got this warfare where you under the desk hiding from the devil because you can't handle it. So my encouragement, if you believe that God is calling you to go into any form of leadership with the dance, open a studio, start a dance ministry, you need to go into a time of fasting and consecration and prayer to make sure this is what God wants. And then to confirm it, I like to ask the Lord to do some supernatural things. I ask the Lord, give it to somebody else that I'm supposed to be doing this and let them come and confirm it and tell it to me. Just so I know I'm guarding my own heart from doing something that I really want because our flesh will make us think it's God because we want it, you know? And so I'll even, I'll pass stuff through my husband and say, uh, babe, I want to do this. 
Uh, but I'm, I'm praying and asking the Lord to reveal it to you through some divine supernatural way. And then you come back and let me know if that happens. Then I know it's okay for me to do this. I'll do that with my pastor. I'll do that with my pastor's wife. I'll do that with my husband because I need to make sure that I'm not moving in the flesh. And in yeah. this, in this generation, there's a, a spirit of competition. There's a performing spirit. There's this look of me spirit and there's no holiness. And so what we have right now is we have, and, and when you touched on this, people still in your choreography, we've actually gone to an event where people got up on the altar and ministered our choreography in front of us. And so if you're not, and then get training, if you want to go into leadership, get training, take advantage of the resources that we offer as a ministry. If you can't afford it, all you got to do is email us and we'll work with you to help you with whatever you need but don't be a copycat of another ministry. We've got to be unique. God didn't call us all to dance the same way. God didn't call us to all minister the same way. We look like this cookie cutter dance ministry. Everybody dressed the same. Everybody looked the same. Everybody used the same songs. I try not to use any popular songs. I try not to wear anything anybody else is wearing. I try to keep the uniqueness because I need them to see God. I don't need them to see that it's about the garment. It's about this emotional hype song. I don't even want the emotions from the crowd. I want us to get up and minister and the song be so sobering that the Holy Spirit can touch the heart to bring forth salvation, healing, or deliverance. Or when the pastor gets up to minister, we've already kind of tilled the ground of the heart and the spirit and got it pliable. So when he ministers that word and the altar call comes, they can receive salvation. That, if that's not your goal and your purpose as a minister of dance, you're not ready. If your goal is not to see souls healed, delivered, and set free, you're not ready. And if you're trying to draw people to your ministry or yourself, you're not ready. It's got to be Holy Ghost orchestrated. They see us and we point them to him. They see us and we point them up. If you're not mature enough to do that, don't touch this ministry. And I, if I give the warning because if you're not, if you're not lining up with scriptures and I'm not saying be perfect because we make mistakes with learning, but your goal has to be that I'm trying to be holy as God is holy because without that, I can't even see the Lord. So if I can't see the Lord, I can't give nobody nothing. And, and that's gotta be, that's gotta be the forerunner for ministry that we want what God wants, when he wants and how he wants it. And we're just a servant. We're just a servant. I'm just serving in any capacity he wants. It's not about me. I don't care if people know me. I don't care if I'm on a flyer. Do you know Jesus? Did I show you Jesus? Did I represent Jesus? If, and if that's not your attitude towards going into ministry, you are not ready. So don't touch it. Don't touch it because it's flesh. And, and it's very important in this last hour that everything we do has to, it has to represent Jesus Christ and it has to be Holy Ghost led. Anything that we're doing that's not, it's flesh. And we've got to learn as a church, as a dance ministry, we've got to learn when it's flesh and when it's Holy Ghost. Because if it ain't Holy Ghost, it's not profiting nothing. You're going to draw people to you and you're going to let them down because you're not even built up enough to live holy before them. You're going to be falling into some slanderous, uh, adultery, fornicating situation. Or, you know, and, and, it, and it's important because when you get in leadership, people are looking at your lifestyle. They're looking at how you dress. They're looking at what you post. They're looking. So you don't have the opportunity to have a bad day. You don't have an opportunity to, to get on Facebook and your body kind dress because you're not looking holy right now. If I can see your heart beating through that dress, something is wrong and your cleavage is out. And we're supposed to be emulating and looking like Christ. You see, and, 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 and I could literally go on and on here because this, this is the passion of my ministry. This is the passion for what I do. I, I'm just trying to get as many, especially the younger generation. Most of them don't even have pastoral leaders. They don't belong to a church, but they get up and they minister. There are certain regions that I will not even go into to minister because the territorial demons there are too strong. I don't want to fight that fight because the warfare I come home with is too great. All, not unless the Lord is telling me to go. If he tells me I have to go, that's a different story. But if I have a choice, I'm not going because I don't need that kind of warfare to come home to, you know, because you're dealing with people that 
they're, they're, they have no leader. They have no word in them. They just get up and minister. And they minister twice on Friday, three, four times on Saturday, and at two, three churches on Sunday. But you look at their Facebook page and they cussing people out. You're half naked. You're behind out. Your breast out. How is that? How is how we name it the name of Jesus and we're doing these things? And so again, my encouragement to anybody going into leadership is you've got to get the relationship right with God. You've got to get it right. When you get that right, then let the Lord confirm it through your spiritual authority. And if you don't have an authority in the spirit, you, you better get you one. Because if you're on your own, you're going to have a hard time. A lot of battles and things I feel like I've been able to escape and win because I had good leadership watching for my soul. Amen. My God. I want to say thank you again, Rachel. A blessing. And trust me, I got your name from the Holy Ghost. He said, your story will be good for this interview. So I just, I thank God for obedience. I thank God for your ministry. I thank God for your obedience and the teaching that you have provided for not only for dancers, but for people in life. I was encouraged. Wow. Bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. So I, even in the spirit realm, he was calling you the queen of obedience. She's the queen. Just listen to her. Just listen to it. She's the queen of obedience. Her sacrifice is so great that she's going to motivate people to be obedient. And as you were speaking through the whole interview, that's what you was portraying, the queen of obedience. I'm not perfect, but you got to live right to do ministry. You can't come halfway. You got to come with scripture. You got to fast and pray. It needs to be a part of your daily lifestyle. Worship is our lifestyle, but what do that mean? We got to get before God. We got to know how to pray. We got to know how to fast. We have to know how to turn down certain situations. We got to know how to warfare, especially in this season. So I thank God for your life. Um, I always close with a prayer. So right now, I just want to close with a prayer. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just say thank you. I thank you for just her story. I thank you for the ministry you have placed in her belly, Father God. Now, where she's not only teaching dance, but she's teaching people how to pray, how to be obedient, how to fast before you and lay before you so that they can hear what you are saying. Continue to give a vision. Continue to provide the provision in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Protect her family, her seed, Father God. Protect everyone who comes under her toolage that you have ordained, that you have sent to her, where they can continue to go globally to increase the faith walkers, Father God. We thank you. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you and God bless you for being a part and listening to the Miko One Show. I'm your host, Cricket. Today, our guest was Rachel Frazier. We want to say thank you to Rachel, founder, CEO of Yet Praise Dance Company. Please, oh my God, please check out the website, www.yetpraisedancecompany.com www.yet y-e-t praise company.com of course the Miko one show also has a website check us out and check out our podcast podcast is on pandora stitcher spotify iheart the whole nine yards check us out website is www.themikoonshow.com www.themikoonshow.com check us out on our YouTube channel. The Miko One Show is on the YouTube channel. Check us out and subscribe to every website. Thank you guys. God bless.